In this quotation, Hine depicts the horrors and shame of child labor being widely used as cheap work in the United States. The vision of deformed and sick children couldn't even be explained properly to those who have not witnessed the crime firsthand. As a photographer, Lewis Hine decided not to tell America, but to show them. But what is child labor? As industrialization increased in America during the late 1800s, many people moved from farms and small businesses into urban areas for factory work. Children were often targeted because factory owners viewed them as cheaper, more manageable, and less likely to strike. At first, child labor wasn't considered a problem. Some thought it was completely acceptable. Some even denied its existence. American children worked in large numbers in mines, glass factories, textile mills, farms, canneries, and many other extremely dangerous environments. The entire families came to America from, you know, all over Europe, and, the, um, and they brought with them, you know, their kids. And wages were so low, and life was so hard for them, there was really um, no way for them to survive unless every single member of the family worked. And that was fun for employers because they would pay children and women less. Many lost limbs, eyes, and even their lives trying to make a few cents. In their harsh and stress-filled conditions, many of the children resemble small adults. Hines' images of children stripped of their innocence continue to have a profound impact on the viewer. Louis Wicks Hine was born on September 26, 1874 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin to Douglas and Sarah Hine. His mother was a teacher and his father was a union veteran and restaurant owner until his tragic death in 1892. Hine was forced to drop out of school at age 15 to support himself and his mother. He earned $4 a week working 13 hours a day in a furniture factory. In 1901, he used the money he collected to complete his schooling later that year. He was hired as a nature study and geography teacher at the Ethical Culture School in New York. Two years later, in 1903, Hein was introduced to his first camera and used it as an experimental teaching tool. Inspired by his many immigrant students, Hein began to document the families arriving at Ellis Island until 1909. His work was a turning point in modern photography. His aim wasn't to document landscapes, architecture, or celebrities, but rather to document normal, run-of-the-mill people that Hein believed had a story that America needed to hear. He was not the first photographer to use pictures to uh, change public opinion, uh, but he was the first really, really good one. Uh, there was a, a photographer that preceded him named Jacob Reese, and he took pictures of um, uh, really bad uh, uh, living conditions in tenements in New York in the late 1800s. But the pictures were kind of awful to look at. The kids looked dirty and uh, it kind of perpetuated the, the stereotype that immigrants were dirty. Um, Mr. Hine changed that. When he took his pictures, he made the children look sympathetic and like ordinary kids. In 1908, Hine took a job for the National Child Labor Committee in order to document conditions in mines and factories throughout the eastern portion of the United States. Photography and the role Hine took as a photographer were a turning point in educating the public on child labor. Rather than representing children as numbers in a chart or lines on a graph, Hine represented the children as actual people whom Americans could relate to. Although there were child regulations in America, many of them were in fact ignored. The earliest law regarding child labor came from Connecticut in 1813. According to Marvin Levine, it merely required that factories teach their young workers how to read, write, and add. According to the 1900 census, there are 2 million child laborers in America. If there are even any child labor laws in place, they are completely ignored by factory owners and parents readily took their children out of school to earn money for the family. Most of these laborers were part of the hundreds of immigrants that came to America each day. Discriminating employers believed that these immigrants were unskilled, non-native parents would hardly ever receive good jobs or substantial pay, and children were forced to support the family as well. Working conditions were most likely the worst part of child labor. Children as young as three would have to wake up each day and go to work. The working conditions for that child depended on what job they had. Field workers. They would rarely wear shoes and suffered from fatigue and infection. Sadly, they were easily trampled by large, heavy, dangerous farm equipment. Renters. Itinerant Texas farmers who rent a farm for a year or so and then move on, giving them nomadic habits and everything is temporary. House unpainted and ill-cared for. 
The children from five years old and upward pick cotton and help with the farm work, but get little or no schooling. It is estimated by State University that 300,000 children are thus affected in Texas alone. Beginning with the five-year-old girl here who picks some, all work including the woman. The nine-year-old girl picks 150 pounds a day. Father is in town. Farm comprises 50 acres and they get about 20 bales of cotton. As miners, boys travel deep into the ground to gather coal. The work was physically challenging for boys this young. They would often suffer lung damage after inhaling large amounts of coal dust. Miners were frequently injured from falling rocks and wounds from pickaxes. The children would have to work from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. every day. Hines caption for this photo reads, Frank, a miner boy, going home, about 14 years old, has worked in the mine helping his father pick and load for three years, was in hospital for one year when leg had been crushed by a coal car. Newsies were young boys who tried to sell things, mostly newspapers, to people on the streets. These children were often verbally abused by the people they tried to sell papers to. They slept outdoors and were susceptible to fatal diseases that were too expensive to treat. How insignificant a newsie is in comparison with matters of state. Peter Pepe, 24 Wanders Court, 10-year-old newsie, selling on the Capitol steps. Been selling for two years, makes 20 cents a day. His father is lounging at the left of the photo at the side of Pillar. The boy begins selling at 5 a.m. Sundays. The youngest of the children would go to work in seafood factories with their parents. They would shell oysters and gut fish with dangerously sharp knives. Oyster shells littered the ground and caused cuts and infections on the barefooted children. Heinz quotation for this photograph reads, All are workers in the Ross Cannery, Seaford, Delaware. The smallest girl seen in the picture was at work 8 o'clock in the morning of the investigation and was seen the same night at 9 p.m. During one visit of the investigators, about 2 p.m., she was absent. She appears to be about five years of age and works irregularly in the cannery, exposed to the dangers of unprotected belting. Her mother works beside her. 1916 was the first year Congress successfully took action in the fight against child labor. It was in the same year that the Keaton Owing Act was passed. It banned the sale of products from any factory, shop, or cannery that employed children under the age of 14, from any mine that employed children under the age of 16, and from any facility that had children under the age of 16 work at night for more than eight hours a day. As it seemed, Heinz's work had paid off. In 1918, however, the Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional in Hammer v. Dagenhart 247 U.S. 251 because it overstepped the purpose of the government's powers to regulate interstate commerce. In 1919, another move was made to end child labor as part of the Revenue Act. Facilities with child laborers were taxed, and age and working hour restrictions were imposed. Unfortunately, this bill met a similar fate as the Keating Owing Act and was struck down as unconstitutional in 1922. Two years before Hines' death, the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 was passed. Now children under 16 weren't allowed to work during school hours or in conditions that may adversely affect their health. 18 was the new minimum age for loggers and miners. Unfortunately, workers like paperboys and farm workers weren't addressed. For many reasons, Hines' work was a turning point in American history. He introduced new ideas into the practice of photography, as well as more important improvements in the field of child labor, 